flag is out in the 2016 Indy Lights campaign is underway. Kyle Kaiser, P1, has the advantage at Zach Beach. The veteran takes advantage. He'll grab a couple of spots, or one spot anyway, move up to P1. They fan out, maybe bang wheels a little bit, but Davey, so far, so good. Great run so far, and what a good start for Beach. I mean, he popped it right into that second spot right there, but matter of fact, he actually got the lead going through turn two right there. What a good move by, uh, by Zach Beach. The rear of the car steps out just a little bit. Zach Beach through turn number four, sets up for turn number five. So Jakey goes from third to first at the first couple of turns of the race. Got Hargrove with a nice start as well, putting himself in the front four. Kaiser dropping back just a bit. Zach Beach coming into your view, Nick. Beach streaks by the theater here in the turn number 10. He's got about a 10 car length lead. Further back, battle for fifth. Santa Urrutia, he's looking racing. He'll slip by Felix Rosenquist. So Mark Rosenquist went from second to sixth here on the opening lap. So Kaiser, Rosenquist, Beach is how they started, but they'll clear the timing and scoring loop. And Zach Beach has started to step away a little bit off that final turn down that long airport straightaway. Beach in that number five machine already setting up for turn number one. And again, Davey, a, a, a pretty impressive start. We have seen some contact between these cars laying on one another a little bit. A piece of uh, an, an infant, we think, an in-plate off the front wing is uh, lying uh, in the area around turn number five. And how about Rosenquist? Well, he dropped back big time, starting second, falls back to sixth. You know, just probably a little bit nerved at the start of the race. Long straightaway, heavy braking, and you want to be cautious, but not too cautious right now. Who do we have there? It looks like uh, Rosenquist the losing another spot. Yep, the ground with the 17 works his way by. Jake, they're back into your view. Yep, as a matter of fact, Beach already the field pass, trying to keep him in tow. It's that number four machine, as a matter of fact. That's Felix Sorales, I believe, trying to reel in your leader, Zach Beach. Yeah, a year ago, Sorales was driving for Brian Bellardi's team. And I'll tell you what, this past lap, he's closed the gap. It is Beach, Sorales, and then Scott Harper of the top three as they run through turn 11. Rob Houghton is one of our pit reporters today, Rob. As you guys are calling the race up front, I'll give you some input here from down on pit lane. We had three different approaches to the rear wing. Everybody with that rear wing all the way forward to give a max downforce, but not all the guys have the same dirty flaps or wicker bills. A big wicker bill for Kyle Kaiser, smaller one for Beach. No wicker bill at all for Felix Sorales. So he's going to have a lot more top line speed. Davey, you can speak to that because, of course, he's making some moves right now. Sorales with no wicker bill on that rear wing. Yeah, and what that does, it gives you so much straightaway speed. And there's some big straightaways here, but then it's, it slows down the corners. You don't have the downforce, you don't have the grip. So the in-between one, he, he's going to be both. Not quite as fast on the straightaways, but a little better in the corners. And that guy with that big wicker bill, he's giving up straightaway speed, but you know he's really fast in the technical section, sections of the, uh, the course. Feet, Sorales, Hargrove, Kaiser, Yerusha, the top five, coming to Nick Hillman. Now Sorales is running down Beach about two or three car lengths as they exit turn number 10. Then you've got Hargrove battle shaping up for fourth. You've got three cars, our pole sitter, Kyle Kaiser, but he's got Santi Yerutia, the, the pro Mazda champion from a year ago, all over the rear wing for fourth. Uh, Zach Beach has some company, doesn't yeah, he? He's got some Felix company Sorales. early on in this race, but Sorales, that Harlan team, you know, those guys came over last year, super impressive. They came in the in this series, I mean, loaded to bear, winning right off the bat, winning here in the first race last year. So they have a great team, and they obviously got a great driver behind the wheel. And Ed Jones, for all of his dominance one year ago, has struggled all weekend. He swept the weekend last year. He's doing no better than the 15th position right now. Beats, Sorales, Hargrove, Kaiser, Yerusha, Peterson, Negrau, Rosenquist, Stoneman, and Blackstock, the top 10. And they are coming into the view of Jake Weary. Sorales has about a two car length advantage, or excuse me, disadvantage behind Beach. Then you wait just a little bit before Hargrove. That battle you talked about for that four, five, six, Nick, tightening up just a little bit and is a pretty good one as it comes into your view. Yeah, Kyle Kaiser has that fourth position. It is Santa Yerutia who has been. Driver who may be on the move is the sophomore and RC Ederson all over the back of his teammate, about a car length and a half mark as they exit turn number 10. So, Davey, I mean, Tire management is key throughout the course of the weekend. It's particularly important on the streets of St. Petersburg. Yeah, and one thing to remember, no pit stops for these guys. That's one thing that they have to do. It is tire management. They don't have a chance to come in and, by the way, not only get new tires, but make adjustments on their car as well. Again, we're scheduled to run 30 here today. 26 laps complete. Beats Sorales, Hargrove, Kaiser, Yerudia in the top five. Back to Rob Houghton. 
Mark, just to give you guys an update, as you talk about the move making being made by uh, R.C. Enerson right now, he was the top driver on sticker tires, the top five all on scuffs, brand new sticker Coopers for the start here for R.C. Enerson. So we're talking about tire management. He started, of course, from the very get-go with a brand new set of tires. That may play a role near the end of this race. Let's go down the pit lane now to day first. Yeah, so quick update on Felix Rosenquist, who started second but has now fallen several spots back and asked John Bruners what's, what's Felix saying on the radio is no, everything's fine he says everything's fine something to keep in mind though Mark James that was his first ever rolling start as it is for a lot of drivers up and down the grid so uh, I'll tell you what these guys are learning quickly about what it's all all about American racing or certainly here in the Indy Lights series yeah Dave that's a great point on standing starts compared to rolling starts they're so different at the standing start you know, they, they're used to it from Europe and coming up in that rank of cars. And with these rolling starts, you have to know when to accelerate, how to get to the gears. You're, you're closer to each other. It's, it's a whole different thing. And that explains a lot why the guys that were in the front row are no longer, you know, in really in contention right now. And Rudy is running fifth in that 55 machine. The seven of R.C. Enerson is right there. They make their way down that short straightaway, which leads them into turn number four. They're starting to prepare for Pioneer Park. That's a pretty good battle. Jake Murray, that's the battle for fifth, and that one's been going at it for a couple of laps now. And Enerson is right there on his heels. It is a maroon car of Uridia, and then right behind him, that red and black of R.C. Enerson, starting to look like one machine here as they work their way through nine. And the tricky part is those are teammates. He will always want to get off on the right foot. Both of those drivers competing for the Schmidt-Peterson organization clean through 10 and 10. But Mark, you're right, R.C. Peterson showing some aggression, stalking his teammate for fifth. Five laps have been completed, Davey, and so far got to be impressed with the uh, the patience I, yeah. I think these drivers are exhibiting. You know, this first race, Mark, we always see it. Is it going to be craziness because it's the first race? They've been out of the cockpit for a while. They're a little bit rusty, so to speak. Um, it's the first racing competition right now, and you just don't know what to, to expect. But I'll tell you what, these are all young kids. They all want to make it the next level. They're showing that their maturity and their experience in, in other forms of racing are, are making them you know, race well. So honestly, any of them saying to themselves after feeling confident, testing and qualifying that, oh my goodness, I didn't realize this was so different. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy about this. And I even, my son's fortunately testing in Indy Lights. And one thing that I do tell him is, when you're out there by yourself and you're just testing and practicing, that's, that's one thing, it's confidence, it's getting to feel of the car, but then when you throw all the other cars out there, it's like a boxer, right? When he's in the gym and he's hitting that punching bag, it feels pretty good, but when you get in the ring and the other guy, that punching bag's hitting you back, that's kind of the same thing here. It's a whole different environment. The pressure's much, much higher. The mistakes, um, you don't want to make, but the pressure's on you for sure. Six laps complete, Nick Kelvin, you got a pick of the leader? Yeah, Beach just streaked by into turn number 10. The front six that have kind of settled their way out, about two or three car lengths separating first to second, second to third, and so forth. Watching the further back, uh, things get a little bit racy, but a nice lead early on for Zach Beach, Mark. Sorales looked like he was going to make some noise. Uh, is he biding his time now? Is his car fast enough to simply stay with Zach? And maybe with five laps to go, he's going to take a shot? So that's what you hope, right? I mean, no, there only one guy knows, and that is Sorales. And the situation, if you're in second right now, and you know you have a better car than Zach, and you know you're pressured, and you see that he, he's sliding around or making mistakes, and you're not, and your car's good, you know you have that opportunity. But one thing you want to make sure that when you do make that pass, it's not a high risk one. You know, it's risk to reward, and you might as well wait in if you feel your car is really solid, it's going to get better as the race goes on. You stay there, but there's been times where I thought I've had a really good car, and I don't even know I'm going to pass this guy later, and later comes, and your car changes, and you can't get by that guy. So, you know, it's that balancing act. You pass him right now, you get out in the front, and you be the guy to, to, to lead the chain, or can you hold back a little bit and try to get him later? You were out of a race car for a long time before you returned to it because of your incident at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, Zach was out a year. I don't care if it's one, two, three, four, or seven. This has got to be a bit of a challenge. No, no question about it, and he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's a hungry kid. He's been out of the cockpit. He wants to be in Indy cars. He, you know, one thing I, I give Zach so much, so much credit for, never been bigger than the sport. You know, he came into the Indy Lights. He's done well. He's won races. He, he proved that he could be an Indy car. It didn't happen. So you know what he did? He goes back into Indy Lights, not be, not be afraid of it. I mean, you should race anything. I go back to sprint cars or shoot modifieds all the time. It's for fun, and, it's, and those don't think that the kids or the guys racing those series are better than you. I mean, 
not not under you. I mean, they're, they could beat you at any day. If Zach comes in here, he's shown that he is the guy that can beat any cars, and I give a lot of credit for coming back. Zach Feach, Felix Sorales, Hargrove, Kaiser, your rookie of your top five, then Ederson, DeGraw, Rosenquist, Stolman, Blackstock, the top ten. The entire Mazda Road to Indy on display this weekend. Some success at Pro Mazda for the young man on pit road with Rob Howard. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'm down here with Pato Award, who I just came in and did a fantastic job today. We just wrapped, wrapped it up, Pato. A big win for you in Pro Mazda. Your first ever win in the Mazda Road to Indy. Uh, give the Indy Radio desk for listeners a little, a little feel of how, how you're feeling right now. Uh, I'm pretty much speechless. I'm so happy for the team and, and all the hard work that has been going down the past few days here um, in Barber and San Pete. So I'm so happy I got this win, and this definitely goes to them. Um, everybody that has believed in me, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And uh, since right now we have four races until the last race in Barber, I really hope we can uh, extend until the complete season and hopefully get that uh, Mazda scholarship and move up to Indy Lights. You're running for Team uh, Pelfrey, obviously, uh, confirmed for St. Petersburg here in the Barber Motorsports Park in April. As your thought, maybe to get a chance to go run with that Team Pelfrey Indy Lights squad? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really want to drive it. It looks so fun to drive. It sounds it sounds great. It looks fantastic. And I've, I've only got good reviews of it. And I talked to Santini, and he said it, it drives kind of similar to the Pro Mazda, but a lot more speed, a lot more downforce. Um, I really, really want to drive it. And congratulations on a great day today. All right, thank you. There's a name to watch out for, folks. Pato Award, the winner today in Pro Mazda. Uh, the 13 is involved in a pretty good battle. A little deeper in the field. Uh, the, the, that's uh, Zachary Clayman DeMello. He's been uh, going at it with Neil Aparico, Pedrahita, Jones, and some others. Pretty good battle coming off the final turn right now between the 13 and the 11. Talking about Zachary Clayman DeMello and Ed Jones. Uh, let's go back to Rob, uh, Rob Houghton on pit road, Rob. Now, Mark, have a look at the front of that race car. That was the incident that we saw at the very opening lap when there was some debris on the track. He's lost the left end plate of that front wing. The team actually pulled the wing out to get him into pit lane to put a new one on. But Zach Clement DeMello would not come into pit lane. He wouldn't do it. He said, I want to stay out here. I'm holding on. So uh, Zachary Clement DeMello holding on there with a damaged front wing. Yeah, damaged front wing, as uh, we pointed out, Rob, it happened very, very early on, I believe. It was on the first lap of this race. And Damien looks like Zach Beats is getting himself a little breathing room. Yeah, he's looking good right now. I mean, he must have things under control. That's another thing as a veteran in this series. He knows what he needs to do as well. If he's not wearing the tires out, he has a nice pace on, and he just keeps himself far enough ahead to where, you know, uh, Sorales can't make that one trick move or, you know, that one surprise move. And he has a nice 10 car lead right now, Mark. I thought for a moment that that battle for second was going to heat up for a couple of laps between Sorales and Hargrove. Kaiser is uh, a, a little ways back. He's about a second behind that battle. Uh, Sorales and Hargrove are going at it pretty good. As a matter of fact, they make their way down that short straightaway toward turn number four. Before long, they'll come into the view of uh, Jake Weary. Hargrove may, took a shot a couple of laps ago, Jake. He's had to settle in for now, though. Yeah, he has. And in doing so, Kaiser has allowed himself to try to get back into that fight and put himself within view of the podium. Zach beats the story right now. Nick, he's got about an eight-car length advantage. Yeah, the front four have really kind of rubber band here the, uh, early on in the going of this race. Uh, Beach has stretched that advantage out to eight, eight car lengths, and you're right, Mark. As early as just a couple laps ago, Hargrove was all over the back of Sorales. That's calmed down as the front three make their way to the front stretch. 19 laps to go, and Davey, they're uh, clicking away. If Sorales, Hargrove, and Kaiser have any hopes of tracking Zach Beach down, they've got about five or six laps to take a legitimate shot. Don't you, think? you know what? And one thing that this tells us right now is, you know, Cooper built such a great tire for these guys. Is it going to make a difference between the first race and the end of the race? Is that tire going to wear out or not? But right now, they're all kind of spread out. They're trying equal distance in between all of them. And they all seem to be carrying the same speed they had versus this race. So right now, tire management's not playing into it at all. How about these double hunter weekends in the lights? Be you an owner, be you a driver? What's your perspective? Well, you know, when they first came out, I, I, I thought that you know, I, I didn't like it. I think it was, you know, I was hoping that you would just have single weekends. You get the crowd here, they get to see the entire weekend. The first one we did for IndyCar was in Detroit. The first one went off, and, and I see I see all the work the crew guys had to do, and the equipment that needed to be fixed for the second one. But then we won the second one, so then I really just decided to like it after that. Once you win, <laughs> I, we wouldn't have had a win in Detroit if it wasn't for that second one. Absolutely. Chance. So um, I changed my mind, and then I look back at it now, and I think it's healthy because 
once you're already here, some of the most expensive things for these teams is personnel, hotels, right. flights. And that really plays a lot. So if you get a doubleheader weekend, man, I think it's a good idea right now. Let's go to Pitt Road and Dave first. An opportunity to catch up with uh, one of the interested parties along Pitt Road. It's 2014 Indy Lights champion Gabby Chavez, who won with Velarde Auto Race. And currently not in a ride with the Indy Car Series. I'll get to that in a second, though. But I know you know Zach Feach. How much fun does he have inside that car? He's having a blast out there. I mean, he's winning this thing. He is able to make the pass like he did on me a few years ago. And he's just, you know, right now he's in a very comfortable position controlling the pace of the race. Speak to. Zach coming over to Bellardi Auto Racing, the job they do here, and obviously they're going to make a great championship run for them. Oh, absolutely. They're a family here, and uh, they, they know how to put out a winning car. Tell us about your situation right now. I know you're uh, working the pit area right now, looking for something at some point down the road in the Verizon IndyCar Series as well, right? I am. Right now my priority is the Indy 500, and once I get that sorted, I can then go looking out for uh, future opportunities. How likely you think uh, is it, or can you say? Or, I mean, optimism obviously reigns supreme at this point of the year. Well, I'm always optimistic. I mean, it, it's, it's a hard situation. I've had to hit the reset button very recently, and I've just now started working. So uh, I can only be optimistic. You know, I, I have to be, and I'm, I'm confident that I can uh, get something going together. I know Brian Bellardi enjoyed the fact you're here. Have a great day. Appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Glad to be here. Gabby Chavez, the 2014 champion. We got problems on the course here, Martin Rivera? The 51 of Shelby Blackstock going into turn 14. Davey had just got off course and lost control of the race car. Happy to report that he is at least back underway. No yellow flag mark. He's off and gone. Just drove in way too deep in that last quarter. Shot off the racetrack. Got out the dirt. Fired it back up and uh, back on track. So Shelby Blackstock, uh, luckily, was able to get that thing back underway. Let's go to Jay Query. I noticed the last time by, guys, as you take that right-handed turn here that is turn number seven. There, of course, and I think it's easy to forget this, Davey, I wanted you to touch on it. You're running on the street roads here of St. Petersburg, and you get that crowning. And as a result of doing it, it irritates the car a little bit. This is not obviously an extended race, but based on the fact that even though it's 30 laps, I wanted to know how much physical conditioning and just overall fatigue becomes a factor when you're constantly battling with the conditions of that race car. The 28 of Dalton Kellen into the runoff area. Looks like he's going to be able to get that back underway now, yeah, Davey. He, he missed that turn, did Kellen, and now actually that 28 machine, he's trying to get it fired back up, guys, but he's going to lose all kinds of track time. Got it fired back up, and it's going to get back on course. It looks like, just as I say it, that machine dies again. Yeah, that's turn number eight where Kellen went into the runoff area, Davey. Yeah, one thing about these cars, too, I'll talk about this runoff area. You go out there, they do have reverse, they do have self-start. But you see that they started and they just jump a little bit. And start, these clutches get some heat in them, and they're not the same as they are early in the race when you really need the clutch. So these guys, it's good experience. Uh, those show Blackstone getting off course there again and flying off the racetrack. But obviously he's uh, or Blackstock, I'm sorry, gets going again. But uh, back to what you you said, Jake, is physical. You know, no matter where you're at, it's a physical sport. I mean, you have to be in good shape. But a street course probably is the most physical because of what you just said. It goes from asphalt. To, to, to concrete, there's bumps, there's traction, there's no traction, and there's walls on boys, both sides, so there's no room for, for forgiveness. So these guys, it's a mental game, no question about it. You have to be mentally strong, but physically, these cars are hard enough. Now, these 30 laps, I don't think they'll see anything in it, but they may have a few sore spots tomorrow, first race of the year. Next, tomorrow, when they have race number two, you know, they're gonna they're gonna definitely fill it after the end of the day. 15 to go, Zach Beats has a lead of almost two seconds. And almost on cue, Sorales and Hargrove starting to heat up again. They are nose to tail into the view of Jay Query. Hargrove, that yellow machine, and Felix Sorales is going to have to proceed with caution with him just behind him because Hargrove is really starting to put some heat now, Nick, on Felix Sorales. Boy, you can see that bright yellow team Pelfrey car from miles away. Hargrove takes a peek to the inside, closes to within about a car length as both cars dance through turn number 10 as Kyle Kaiser sitting in fourth is an interesting spectator, but Mark, that is easily the best battle on the track. Uh, Sorales and Hargrove making their way on the front stretch. Right now, Sorales just appears a little quicker off the turn, Davey. You know, he's fast where he needs to be fast, and that's exactly right. When you come off that corner, the momentum gains. So the passing zone's really here. It's going into one. It's a great passing zone. And, and to go into the hairpin, even 13 is an okay passing zone if you get in there just right. 
there's only a couple of them on these street courses, and where that passing zone is, is he's, he definitely has a nice lead. Yep, uh, Felix Sorales is uh, trying to swat away that bumblebee-colored car, uh, that number three of Scott Hargrove. And again, they make their way toward that portion of the courts towards uh, problems for Zach Veach. We pick it up on the monitor. Zach Veach is bobbled a bit, Jake. Yes, Sorales just got, took Zach Veach, and now Scott Hargrove wants to do the same. Beach finds himself in that second position, but Nick, it's tenuous at best. The Beach had about a 10 to 12 car length lead a lap ago. Now it looks like he may have to give up the second spot. Hargrove takes a look to the inside. They make contact. Beach brushes the outside wall. He'll lose second and then third to Kyle Kaiser. But all times, all times of problems for Zach Beach, who surely had a win in order, Mark. He was uh, he was enjoying an advantage, Davey, of two seconds, and the lead is gone. Wow, I don't know if he had a mechanical issue. It doesn't seem to be. He seems to be up to speed. Things are going good. I don't know if he made a, a technical mistake or what happened, but wow, here's a replay right here. Shows Zach going into turn four. Just slows down. Something happens to that car. I mean, there's no question about it. He just lost some power or something there, it seems like. Or you know what? He could have missed a shift or something right there. I was but he definitely ready to say that. He definitely, these are paddle shifts in these cars now. So normally that doesn't happen, but something definitely happened where he lost power off of turn three or turn four right there. Rob Houghton. Yeah, just down here in the beach pit right now, folks. They just told me the car just shut off. They don't know what happened at all, but the car simply just shut off. Well, Is there anything more sickening than it being no. out of your control? Unless you're the one that hit the, the kill switch accidentally, right? That's the only way if, it's, if that's what happened. But it doesn't seem to be. I mean, obviously, with so many laps, them doing just fine now. You just don't know. I mean, it fired back up, so uh, the only guy knows is Zach. If something went wrong in there and he put his hand in the wrong place or something, but uh, shutting off and starting back up doesn't happen very often, but he's back up to speed right now. Oh, first and fourth. Uh, uh, let me ask, how do you get rid of that? I well, mean, you have to get rid of it, but how do you put that behind you and just move forward? Well, here's the difference. So, just like right now, we've seen him lead this race straight as narrow. He looked great. It just showed him coming off that final turn, coming off this front straightaway. He's sideways. He's, he's fighting the wheel. We watch him going into one. He's looking at his mirrors with the car behind him. He's now trying so much harder to try to make that up and probably has slower lap times to it. And Jake Query, I think his odds of, of let alone Kaiser and Hargrove, I don't know if anybody's going to catch Felix Sorales at this point. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Sorales has really been clean as well. You could tell with Beach perhaps those last few circuits by that something was getting away from him just a little bit. Speaking of getting away from him, Sorales doing exactly that over Scott Hargrove. That distance now is about 12 car lengths between the two. Yeah, the big key for Felix Sorales is he caught that underpowered Millardi car at the perfect time and drew, jumped to the outside. The second place running car at the time, Scott Hargrove had to work for it. So that lead is pretty strong for Felix Sorales, Mark, as he heads onto the airport front stretch. After our pulse that are lost a couple of spots on the start, Kyle Kaiser, maybe his car's looking strong later in the run with 11 laps to go. Yeah, he sure is. And, you know, who knows? I mean, there's still 11 laps to go, 10 laps to go right now, Mark, and so many things can still change. I mean, obviously, Sorrell is huge lead for him right now. Not a huge, but a nice lead for him. And so he's comfortable. But look at Zach. We kept saying we thought this was already in the bag for him, right? But things changed so quickly in the sport. Well, the Leo keeps saying a long time ago, he don't feel it going. That's applicable everywhere. Sorrell is hard growth, Kaiser. Beach, Yerutia, Anderson, DeGrau, Rosenquist, Stoneman, Petrahita, your top ten. Then Ed Jones, uh, Zachary Clement, DeBello, Neil Avarico, Anderson, Blackstock, and Kellett. The 16 cars is we're just under 10 laps to go now. Zoralis is your leader. Took it over after the bobble by Zach Beach. Could have been an electrical problem. Could have missed a shift as Davey said accidentally hit the kill switch. We won't know till the race is over if we have the opportunity to talk to him. But the big beneficiary, no question, has been the number four machine of Felix Zoralis. Hargrove, Kaiser, Beach don't seem to be able, Davey, so far to change it down. Yeah, you know, they have nothing for him. I'm looking at lap times too, Mark. Is, is he definitely, you know, they're on pay, the same pace. And we're on the same pace, you're not going to pass him. So. He is definitely in the right spot with time to go. In just about two laps, he's picked up a lead of 3.4 seconds. Sorales over Scott Hartgrove. Back to day first. Yeah, the name Gary Neal. You may remember Gary is a part of 8 Star Motorsports. Well, Dale Pelfrey bought all the assets in the offseason, started his own Indy Light Series, kept the old shop though at Papado Beach. This team is off and running. And 
Gregory, what are you going to be happy with the way that the Scott Hargrove has handled this race so far? Yeah, Scott's race is going great so far. You know, nine laps to go, P2. Hopefully, we can get it done. Got to pedal harder to catch up with the leader, though. It's a tough competition out there. But Scott's a tough one. Let's see what happens. We were around here last year with, with Eight Star. How much different is it this year? More cars, a heck of a lot more talent out there. Colors this year, you getting used to it? Yeah, yellow's not too bad, and you know, I think one's doing a great job too, up in the top ten. Good luck the rest of the way. Gary Deal keeping an eye on a couple of these bright yellow team Pelter machines. Scott Hargrove right now leading the way between the two. RC Enerson in that seventh Lucas Oil car is working on the 55 of Eurukia. That is the battle for the fifth position. Surrallis lead. Hargrove, Kaiser, your top three. Surrallis with a lead of almost four seconds. The Sack Beach led the lion's share, and he has slipped even further now, Davey. Uh, Jake, everyone's coming into your view. Zach will be the last one to do so. I think that car has lost power. It did just lose power. Matter of fact, a bad day now becomes worse for Zach Beach. That red machine, Ballardi Autosport, limping oh, its again? way now, and Zach Beach has it back under power, but only at about 10% at this point. As a matter of fact, Jones is now going to get past him, and I think Beach is just going to do the sportsmanlike thing and get out of the way because that car, something once again has gone wrong for Zach Beach. Nick, Nick. And as they make their way through turn 10, Beach swerving back and forth. There's a distinct white line on the left rear tire, too. So uh, the, the power plant problems compounded with the chance of an opportunity that he might have gotten into the wall. But boy, what a miserable afternoon for Zach Beach. It doesn't take long to go from hero to zero, does it? Well, there's definitely an electronic issue in that car allowing it to shut off. Then obviously, they, these cars have starters. He must, it must start back up. So whether it's uh, electronics are horrible. These cars are so many of them. They're bad. Sometimes they're hard to find, but it must be something getting heat soaked or something that's shutting this car off. And as we see, he's back up to speed. <laughs> but unfortunately, we're, we're Zach Fall. He's in 10th position right now. A contender to win, and he slipped all the way to 10th. Not good. All the way uh, to you know, I mean, From leading this race in good shape, having the speed, you know, having the poise to, to, to pull this off and then having some mechanical issues, which happens in our game, unfortunately. Puts him right back in that 10 spot right now. And just, they got, he's happy about having two races. We can all sure, sure, yeah. Hargrove and Kaiser continue a pretty good battle. That's the battle for second as Sorales continues to check out. The guy pilot in that number four, Davey, has a lead of almost four seconds. Wow, look at that. So that tells you a little bit, right? He was probably holding back a little bit behind Zach, now using his, his stuff up. And just kind of riding, but and now that because his lap times are amazing right now, these Cooper tires, man, I'm saying they're really hanging on, and it seems like they go faster as the race goes on. Jake, that battle for second continues to heat up between Hargrove and Kaiser. Absaralis is already working his way through turn number eight. Then you've got that battle for the second position. Kaiser trying to close himself in on Scott Hargrove. Hargrove, a two and a half car length advantage keeps that advantage around the park and does not allow for that gap to be closed. Both of these drivers made starts here at St. Petersburg a year ago for Scott Hargrove. It's a bit of a redemption year. Had funding issues derail his 2015 season. Mark, he's holding on to that second spot as he makes his way to the final corner. Six laps to go as they come off of the final turn on this course. And uh, Davey, I tell you, this, this course absolutely flat, no doubt about it, but uh, there are many challenges here, uh, and, and especially the transition from concrete to asphalt. Yeah. Oh, wait, look like at Beach on pit lane right now, it looks like. No, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, there he is. And off power again. Geez, just having a terrible time, Mark. So Zach Beach, day first. The struggles continue as his car limps along through the 11 and 12 complex. Yeah, he, he just hopped on the radio. It's his guys, this thing's shutting on and off, and it, it's these. Uh, He's going to have to come in, I'm guessing, but as uh, Davey alluded to earlier, definitely an electrical issue for a one-time uh, leader in this race, Zach Beach. Well, Davey, I, I mean, it, I, I guess at this point, run until it quits. Yeah, I, you know, it's points, right? He, he hopefully is going to run this car for the season. We don't know exactly where that stands right now, and, and he 
would love to have an IndyCar ride, but right now you got to try to get the points. He, he's not in last, uh, but he's close. He's 15th right now, so maybe a situation where no risk because shutting this off could be not only danger for him, but the other guys on the racetrack. And, get a bad, bad part of the racetrack and it shuts off and right in front of somebody. So again, let's uh, let's revisit what we talked about, the challenges of this course, the transitions from concrete to asphalt, what it could do to the handling of the racetrack. Oh yeah, and it's crazy because I, I went out earlier in the two-seater before all the rubber got down and you go from the asphalt, which had fairly good grip, but to the concrete that had zero and sometimes that turns opposite. It seems like the concrete will get rubber on it and it has more grip than the asphalt does. So it's a situation to where you got to pay attention and there's a lot of uh, different areas on this racetrack the crowning of the track as jake said earlier makes a big difference like so the rain runs off of the standard roads matter of fact when you come off the turn four or five area that's a parking lot that's normally a parking lot so there's not a lot of rubber on that either there's stripes on it for parking stripes paint on this track too gives you uh, you lose traction on the paint there's a lot of that around the course as well four laps to go that battle for second pretty much status quo as it works its way toward nick Hillman. yeah hargrove with about a two to three car length advantage as both drivers climb on the brakes slide those mazdas through turn number 10 that bright yellow masa of scott hargrove holding on to that second position as kaiser tries to run him down through 11. a little bit of brakes yeah, that number three, yeah he lost, he not only did he brakes but he way over drove the corner he i don't know if he has a good run coming off he kaiser may be able to give him a challenge go down and turn one. Looks like he, he recouped and he's not going to, but boy, he needs to be careful in these last few laps. So as uh, we, we have reached the three lap to go portion of this race, 27 complete. Jake coming at you will be two pretty good battles. They're separated some. The first one is the battle for second. That is Scott Hargrove in that yellow machine with Kyle Kaiser in tow, and then Yerutia and R.C. Anderson, they're engaged in a pretty good battle for fourth place. We'll take a look at that R.C. Anderson battle. The Hargrove Kaiser won about the same as it was last time by, but Anderson trying to close in on that fourth position, and Nick, he's doing so, again, like we mentioned earlier. Those two cars almost look like one. R.C. Anderson trying to make a move here at the end of this race. A pair of bright red and black cars, Schmidt teammates making their way through turn number 10. Uh, Anderson takes a wide exit to turn number 10, Mark. He's pedaling, trying to get every inch on the racetrack. The 55 machine is going to get back to the main straightaway first, but again, Davey, there's that brake smoke. The tire smoke coming off that right front tire going to that final corner. It's easy to do that if you over brake. Beach is finally coming in the pits right now. He is done for the day, unfortunately. But yeah, you overshoot that, and what happens, you can lose a lot of momentum. And being able to get on the accelerator one of that small front straightaway mark. Well, two laps to go now as Zach pulls it into his pit box. Sorales checked out. Almost a six-second advantage. Meanwhile, Hargrove, Kaiser, Yerutia, and Anderson. Jake, I won't say it's a four-car battle, but certainly that foursome is getting a little bit closer than they were the last couple of times by. Absolutely, trying to work their way into that podium. Hargrove has been comfortable in second, but Kaiser has absolutely been knocking on that door. And then that battle for the final podium spot is not the only one, because that battle for fourth, Nick, continues to tighten up. And all it's going to take here on these last lap and a half is one slip up, one mistake, and that second or fourth position may be in jeopardy. All four of those cars, though, Mark, clean through turn 10. Interesting to note, Davey, Ed Jones was dominant a year ago as we see the white flag displayed for Felix Zorales. Ed Jones currently finds himself in 10th place. What a difference a year makes. Yeah, unbelievable. And I mean, it's not, he came off last year like he wasn't going to lose a race for a long time, to be honest with you. And here he is back in 10th place. And, and his teammate, his teammate, by the way, is leading. Yeah. You know, so uh, pretty amazing. So, Jake Query, uh, we hate to use these tired old cliches, but they are nonetheless accurate. This young man, Felix Zorales, has not put a wheel wrong all day long. He bided his time. A little misfortune by Zach Beach aided his cause, but boy, he's hit his marks all day today. And yesterday, he barely, Nick, even got a chance to hit his marks. Engine problems derailed the first practice session of the year for Felix Zorales with Carlin Racing, but it's been, oh, what a good day here at race number one for the Indy Lights. The young driver from Puerto Rico switched teams in the offseason. Mark, career win number one came at the historic Milwaukee Mile through turns 13 and 14. Here comes Felix Zorales. The Florida sun is shining on this deep blue sea and deep blue race car as it heads down the main straightaway for the final time. Checkered flag is out, and Felix Zorales will go to victory lane on the streets of St. Petersburg.
Now we're going to follow up that battle behind him to see who grabs that second spot as they make their way off the turn for the final time. Hargrove will grab P2. Kaiser, Yerutia, R.C. Ederson, your top five. DeGrau, Rosenquist, Toman, Pedrahita, Jones, your top ten. Zachary Clayman, DeMello, Alberico, Anderson, Blackstock, Kellett. Zach Veets led a lot of laps and will do no better today.